Today is election day, and we're in the studio I'm recording one of my favorite bands of all time, The American Dream, and we're doing I Ain't Searching. They were my heroes. American Dream was one of my favorite bands, and when I thought about doing uh, In the Pocket, even before In the Pocket was named In the Pocket, the American Dream was it was a band that I thought about. Like I got to do the American Dream, I Ain't Searching, and the Nas. There were the two bands that came to to mind when we when I thought about this project. Down, and I were talking about it. It's also interesting that it took a couple of years to get to this track, and it was the first one that I thought about. And this is just one of those songs, man. You listen to it, and it pushes those buttons. It pushes that, wow, that's a great song. I want to sing it. I want to be part of it. And it's not, it hasn't been uh, overperformed to death or covered to death so that it still has that magic of the first time you heard it. I wrote I Ain't Searching uh, after a day of playing softball, the American Dream versus It's a Beautiful Day. Uh, we figured they had a really pretentious name, so we needed to beat the crap out of them in softball, which we did. And I figured, what better way to celebrate our victory than to write a song about uh, existential teenage angst. Growing up as a kid, I was listening to WMMR, WYSP, and uh, they were playing the American Dream, and they were like a big Philly sensation. I wasn't even aware of that they were from Philadelphia. To me, they were just like another big band that they were playing on the radio, like they would be playing Cream or Led Zeppelin or something. So, uh, but I always loved the song. The American Dream did influence me a lot because they were they were a great ensemble. They really they had three lead singers, um, three guitar players, uh, kick-ass rhythm section. They worked really well together. Their arrangements were really were really tight, really well well thought out. The original track is a little slower. Uh, it's not quite as aggressive in a way. This one is a little bit more edge rock and roll. Uh, and not that we set out to do that, but it was just, you could feel it. Everybody got in the room, started playing the, the, the parts. And uh, again, David and Eric have such a great interaction anyway from being in the Hooters for so long. But Eric started singing it with some grit and some attitude. So it's more aggressive. With all the in-the-pocket stuff, there's an aspect of capturing something, an essence of the original. And, uh, and, and I think we did. I ain't searching anymore. I wasn't super familiar with the song, I really love it, and uh, the one thing I know that's a really cool thing is that Todd Rundgren produced the record that it's from. He sought us out, he thought we were the best band in Philadelphia, he went after us, he followed us to Washington, a couple gigs in Washington area, Georgetown, hung with us, and we went up to the record plant and did that album as a demo, right off, right. I mean, I'm telling you, Steve, you could wake us up in the middle of our sleep and we could do that album at the time, you know. And we just banged this whole album out as a demo that impressed uh, 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 Bearsville Records and, uh, and he got us signed. It was a lot of fun recording with Todd Rundgren. He uh, was a wise ass, as were the five of us. And uh, <laughs> things never got boring. He liked to abuse the uh, studio equipment mercilessly pinning meters into the red, a uh, habit which I've unfortunately adopted in my own production work uh, to the chagrin of many studio owners everywhere. I have a long history with Nick. I first met Nick when I was 13 years old. He would walk around everywhere with a Fender Esquire strapped around his neck, playing note for note all the great solos of all the great rock bands. He was the first person that ever really kicked my ass musically. So hanging around with him was really challenging to me. He could bust in and say, yo Nick, look at this. And he goes, which was the intro, which they're playing now, uh, to I Search. And it was cute, and it was like, all right, good boy, Eric, all right. Yeah, remember one day I told him, Eric, you know, you can, uh, you could make up your own solos, too. Uh, that could be fun, too. And he got this look of revelation on his face, like he'd never thought of that. Wow, really? I can do that? So that was, that was, 
a big step in, in, in my evolution. And I continued hanging out with him and just seeing, seeing him as he wrote songs and had you know, band after band culminating in the American dream. Look what I started. He's come up with some of the greatest guitar solos of all time. <laughs> so, uh, Ebaz, you're welcome. Five takes of it, we're listening back and you know figuring out which one we like the best. I think the first take might be the one we use. The uh, great part about what happened today is uh, we were getting sounds and they're running the the song down and and I'm not even thinking I'm, I'm just old school. I just hit record and the machine's recording. Um, so they just run the song down without even knowing that we're tracking. There's no rolling. There's no hey we're doing it. They just take it because they're just running it down. And that's the version we used. The original version is very introspective and kind of careful. Um, I want the song to sound desperate. Um, you know, maybe it's just sort of where I'm at in my life. Um, maybe it's where we're all at in our lives. But, uh, you know, I want to bring out the real, you know, <laughs> the terror of, of realizing that at some point, you know, you just got to say, this is it, this is where I'm at and this is how it's going to be. It's really great to be uh, doing another in the pocket project uh, to benefit the Settlement Music School. Uh, it just feels so good to, to, to help people and to, to just be involved in music. I mean, music is such an important part of our lives and it's great to help other people uh, who want to continue to make it part of their lives. And that's what the school does. It just helps foster just great music and, and, and that, that beautiful feeling of creating music. So it's just awesome to continue to, to help that and to raise money for that. Great playing with the In the Pocket guys, always fun, but it's also really good to know that it benefits the Settlement Music School. Uh, to think that uh, something that I was a part of would be passed on to, uh, you know, the upcoming youth and the musicians of tomorrow, it's, you know, very flattering. I've been aware of Settlement Music School for a long time. Um, I belong to the Classical Guitar Society. I'm a closet classical guitar player. So I would go there oftentimes to see classical guitarists perform. That's where they host all their concerts. And I know people who teach music there, and it's a great school, and I think the idea of raising money to fund scholarships for kids who can't afford to take music lessons is really important, uh, especially in a lot of school systems today. Music programs, art programs, are the first things to be cut when you have budget cuts. So they have to turn to private institutions like Settlement to get music lessons. So. Good work. This is our seventh track, I Ain't Searching by the American Dream. Thank you for the support of In the Pocket. Uh, please come out and see us. We're having a gas doing this thing, and um, thank you very much. that I